Welcome to this demo on how you can implement Printix in five easy steps. Before we get started, let's take a look at the printers already installed on this computer. We have two physical queues, both using native manufacturer drivers and set up as TCP IP printers. These two queues have been in use so far. No Printix has been installed or introduced to this computer yet. To get the Printix Cloud Home registered, we need to go to printix.net and click on Start a Free Trial. This will start your 30-day free trial with no limitations. We need to enter some basic information so Printix can stay in contact with you. The subdomain is our Printix Home URL that we get to choose freely in the field called Subdomain. We'll complete this process by clicking on Start Trial. A system-generated email will be sent to your inbox. Please also check your spam. After receiving the welcome email, click on Get Started. A new browser tab will open. We need to now enter our password. This is the password we are going to be using to sign into Printix Administrator and Printix Client once we've downloaded and installed it. We'll click on Save. Next step is to download Printix Client to your computer. After we've downloaded Printix Client, we'll need to install it. We can select one of the languages supported and we'll continue clicking through the installer. The installer will stop and start the Windows Print Spooler. We'll complete the installation by clicking on Finish. Next, we'll be asked to sign in to Printix Client using a new browser tab. Use the credentials you chose in the steps before. We can now close this window and are authenticated on this computer. The last step in this installation wizard will help us discover printers on the network and on the local computer. The discovery is complete and we can close the window. Next, we'll set up the sign-in method by clicking on Set up sign-in method. We have the choice between Azure AD, Google Domain, Okta, OneLogin, Local Active Directory and signing in with email, which we have done so far. I'm going to choose to set up Azure AD. The credentials for my Microsoft Work account are already saved on this computer, so all I need to do is click on Next. My account is set up with two-factor authentication, so I'll approve the sign-in using my Authenticator app. That's all we need to do. Our Printix.net Azure AD domain is now connected and I can use any Azure AD account to sign in with Printix client. When we look at the printers, we can see that we've discovered the two printers that were formerly set up on this computer. We can also see they are allocated to Network 1, which is a generic default name for the first network we discover printers on. So we'll go to the networks, click on Network 1 and rename this to something meaningful. When we check the printers once again, we can see the network name has been inherited. Let's take a look at the printer queues that were already installed on this computer. We can now see the three-digit Printix printer ID has been amended to the queue name. Other than that, everything has been retained. The queue name and the driver are the same as they were before. So I can continue using these printer queues, but the difference is they are now Printix managed. We can also see this by going to the computer overview opening up the properties for this computer and then going to print queues. Both printer queues appear and we have a tick in the managed column. This means the queues are converted and now managed by Printix. We can now move forward and utilize the implementation wizard by clicking on implementation. We have a few different choices now. So what I'm going to do is install Printix client for this tenant called printix-azure.printix.net 
onto a laptop which is on a different network. A network that is completely firewalled to the network this computer is on. And while I do that, please note that the manual that we can access through the blue question mark on the right hand side of the screen will give us help topics in our online manual depending on the screen we are currently viewing. So if we wanted to learn how to manage printer queues, we'd go to the printer queue overview and then pop out the question mark. We can now read up on how to create printer queues, automatically add them, etc. Moving forward from here, we have a few different options in how to proceed. For complete peace of mind, we can come to the tenant settings by going to the menu bar and then going to settings to find the migration policy. So let's set up printx tenant so it does not change and convert anything when we install printx client to another computer that might be on a different network. First of all, we'll choose the option to not change the queue name, not even amending the three digit printx ID. Also, we can disable the creation of default printer queues and the conversion of printer queues. When we save this, it'll have impact to the printer queues on my computer immediately. We can see the three digit printx printer ID has been removed from the queue names. And one final step, we'll go to the printer queues, open the printx anywhere properties, and also deactivate the automatic installation of this queue and deactivate it altogether. This way we've set up Printix tenant so it will not convert or change anything on any computers that we deploy Printix client to in future. So we can take the migration at our own pace. In the meantime, I've completed the setup of Printix client for this tenant on my laptop, which is on a remote network. So we'll hop over to the computers and I'll sign in to Printix client on my laptop now. Because I've set up this tenant to work with our Azure AD, I can use my credentials on my laptop that were stored also. If this laptop belonged to a different user, I wouldn't need to invite that user, but that user can simply sign in using the Microsoft account. So my laptop is now registered and the user account would have been added to the user manager. As I'm using the same account, we won't see any change on the user manager, but we can see this computer online in the computer manager. And most importantly, it's on an unknown network. So one of the final steps in concluding the migration to Printix Cloud for multiple other computers is to define the network. My laptop is allocated to the guest Wi-Fi which is completely firewalled to the network that this computer we are currently viewing is signed into. So we'll open the properties for my laptop, scroll down, and then create a new network from here, which is going to make a Printix network based off of the unique thumbprint, which comprises of the standard gateway IP address and the MAC address that this computer received from the DHCP server. We'll call it guest Wi-Fi. Okay, we've now added the network, which we can check in the network overview. My laptop is instantly allocated to that network. And we can come to the printer overview, discover printers, and choose the guest Wi-Fi. We are now sending a command to Printix client on my laptop to execute an SNMP broadcast on its own subnet. This way, we can scan our entire organization for printers. And here we are. Two more printers have been discovered on the guest Wi-Fi. Besides some online diagnostics that show us what's wrong with the device, in this case, the tone is low, we can also see that there's one printer queue that already exists for this printer and there's zero for the HP OfficeJet. This is because this printer is already set up on the laptop and Printix has discovered that. Because we changed the migration policy, we have zero printer queues for the OfficeJet because this isn't set up on the laptop. As we set up the tenant to not convert any queues, the printer queue 
is untouched on the laptop and we are still printing the way we were before Printix was introduced. We could now go to the computer overview, look into the properties for this device, click on print queues and then say convert print queues. This will send a command to Printix client on the laptop to convert the existing printer queue so it becomes Printix managed. And there it is. The queue is now converted, but again, the queue name and the driver has been retained. So there's no impact to the end user. We can now continue and deploy Printix client to more computers across our organization, define the networks in Printix, and then convert the queues computer by computer, or we can come into the networks, open the network we'd like to convert all queues on, and then override the global setting, which is no, to yes. This would now convert all printer queues on all computers running Printix client on that network that are running TCP IP and WSD ports. So after you've deployed Printix client to all of your computers, gained insights to all of your networks, printers, printer queues, and completed the conversion, you could then start the subscription by clicking on this button. All you need to do is complete the form and then add your credit card. And you're done. Thanks so much, and we hope to see you soon.